Oftentimes, I love going down memory lane here. This time, it's going to be a little different. We're going to go down the memory lane back to January 27th at 7.37 p.m. when Oklahoma State University lost 10 members of its cowboy family in a sad plane crash, leaving a Colorado basketball game. Today, we take on Ole Miss inside Galgab Arena, and we remember the 10. So where were you? Or even if you weren't alive, this one means more. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl-related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. We are available on all of your podcasting platforms as well as YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Aldeo State. And today, very happy, very happy to let you guys know we're partially brought to you by FanDuel. Yeah, changing it up a bit here. So remember the 10. For me personally, I will always remember this game because, you know, this was the last uh, Oklahoma State game I got to experience with with my, my pops. And unfortunately, it was a loss, right? But, you know, it was fun back then. Uh, I, I enjoyed the Big 12 um, I really enjoyed having Colorado in the league. But, yeah, we, we played a game in Colorado, January 27th, um, and uh, Jamal Mosley, who played in the league for quite some time, uh, Colorado, he put up a 20-point burger on us. He had 11 boards. Um, he paced to Colorado, you know, to extend their, their I don't know, their, their hold over some of the quality teams in the Big 12 back then. And they ended a five-game winning streak that, that we were on. We were we were riding pretty high, pretty hot. Uh, DJ Harrison chipped in 13, 14 points on us. Uh, Maurice Baker, you know, he, he was on fire. He dropped 27 points in a game that realistically we probably shouldn't have lost because we were 13 and four on the season. We were cruising. Andre Williams chipped in 15 points and 16 rebounds. Uh, everybody remembers Andre Williams, right? He was known for his rebounding prowess, his defensive prowess. Um, so to to you know, kind of think back and, and remember, there was times that he could be very productive offensively as well. Is pretty pretty fun. So again, you know, we love reaching back to some of the nostalgic type of stuff on this season, or I mean, on this channel. Sorry, and as we progressed throughout the course of the season and now into the off season for football. Uh, we're going to continue to to go back down memory lane as we have a very cool treat a little bit later on today. Uh, we'll have Kai Staley uh, joining the program. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep tracing this thing back, but you know, for me, it was, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it changed things perspective wise. Um, for me, you know, to, to think that you could be yelling at the, the radio and screaming my, my face off to being, being in tears. Um, yeah, you know, it was, it was a wild ride and the crazy part, you know, when you, when you dig back into it, um, you know, the, the, the pilots involved were people that were very, very, very trusted uh, with Oklahoma State University. So the, the staff and even some of the players and everybody, they knew these guys very, very well. Um, and they were very experienced pilots. Uh, Denver Mills, you know, he, he was somebody that had been fly, fly, flying, sorry, professionally for a long time. Uh, Bjorn Falstrom, uh, the, the co-pilot, he was extremely familiar with the Beechcraft Super King Air 200 which was the, the the Jet Express Service aircraft that, that went down in the beginnings of a snowstorm. I actually don't live too far away from where that all took place at the moment. 
And, you know, for the, the again, the nostalgia type. Yeah, that, that one, you know, that, that one bothered me a lot. I was maybe in the minority. I don't know. Maybe some of you can agree. I remember when we brought in the great legendary Dave Hunziker, um, essentially replacing Bill Tegans, who was the voice of the Cowboys, who worked for the Oklahoma News Channel for forever. That was the only voice I'd ever heard calling games growing up as a kid. So that was that was it for me, right? And and back then, being on TV was significantly different. Yes, we're showing our age here, but nonetheless, being on TV back then was significantly different. So it was pretty rare for it to happen. Therefore, you got the bulk of your information just being glued in front of the radio. And that's what me, me and my dad would do. We'd sit in the living room, glued to this old, old, big, big radio. And, you know, to me, I still, I still enjoy listening uh, to the calls because although visualization is a lot more exciting to me, when you're listening to the game, you can absorb more of everything that's going on. If, if that makes any sense. Um, and you can visually picture where they're out on the floor, court, field, whatever. Um, and, and, and to me, it kind of allows you to be wrapped up in the game. And that was all because of Bill Tegans. So when I very first started hearing Dave Hunziker calling stuff, I hated it. Right? I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit. Um, you know, I was just, I guess, as a kid, I was just that big of a Bill Tegans guy. And... But naturally, you know, the Dave Hunziker, Pistols Firing, all that stuff, it's iconic and it grows on you. But I remember the first time I heard Pistols Firing and all that, and I was like, who is this guy? This this is not, no, no. We need to find somebody closer to Bill Tegans. <laughs> so I like being wrong, all right? Every now and again, it's good for the soul. And I was definitely, definitely wrong on that one. But again, it was just, I felt that connection. My whole childhood was Bill Tegans. So when I heard Bill Tegans, like I knew what to expect and I can visualize what was happening. Um, and I actually went to school. So shout out Fleming family, if Tyler Fleming or somebody in your family catches this, uh, holler at me, brother. But I, I grew up in Enid, Oklahoma with um, uh, Tyler Fleming, but Nate was their cousin. Uh, and Nate Fleming is one of the basketball players who perished in the crash. Daniel Lawson was the other player that uh, perish in the crash. Well, actually, we'll go over um, uh, everybody, but real briefly, guys, you, you know I've got to, I've got to jump in here because I'm insanely excited to announce. Well, re-announce because I just announced it already. <laughs> but uh, we have a new partner for our sports editing, and our partner now for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in America is Fanduel. If you're new to Fanduel, it's even better. Uh, they have so many great features that will make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers can join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to the point spread to the player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at bigger payout with same game parlays. All you got to do is get yourself hooked up, whether you go through the app or if you just simply uh, look for it online. Everybody wins in this one, guys. It's all on the app. It's safe, secure, and super easy. Football fans, do not miss out. Basketball fans, this is an opportunity. All of it. Place your first $5 bet and get a $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com. Using promo code locked on again, that is fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more fun with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. So, um, yeah, I, I almost feel like there's a lot of reasons this just sets up to be right. Um, we, you know, we lost Spencer Sanders to Old Miss. Now we get Ole Miss coming into Gallagher Ab Arena for the last iteration, at least contractually speaking, as of right now. Uh, this will be the last game in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. We've been doing this in basketball for, for quite some time, for years now. 
Uh, and this will be the last iteration of it unless we, we in fact, kind of, you know, fix the contract. But as we already talked about, I grew up with Bill Teagans being that guy for me. When I heard Bill Teagans, I would come running because I knew that the game was on, right? My dad didn't have to say nothing. He knew the minute I heard Bill Teagans, I was stopping anything that I was doing as a child. And uh, we talked about Denver Mills, very, very good pilot. And uh, Bjorn Yallstorm, he was the co-pilot. And from what I read about him, this was his baby. This airplane, uh, the Beechcraft Super King Air 200, was what he was most comfortable with. Uh, so, you know, he, to him, he knew the plane like the back of his hand. It was just, you know, a weather deal. Uh, Kennel Durfee, the television and radio engineer. Uh, William Hancock the third. he was a media re relations coordinator. Brian Lewinstra, he was an athletic trainer, Right. Uh, Pat Noyes, director of basketball operations. And then everybody knows Jared Weiberg. Um, for those who don't know, Chad Weiberg is our new athletic director. Jared Weiberg obviously was uh, his brother. So our current athletic director, his brother was on this flight uh, that, that crashed. You know, so there, there's a lot of things that circle the wagons. Uh, as far as Nathan Fleming yeah, I grew up with uh, his cousin and Enid, so obviously they were kind of very, very affected. Daniel Lawson was not only a player um, that added minutes, but he was a player that you could potentially see a little bit later on developing into something very, very uh, special. Him being from Detroit, uh, Nate Fleming being from Edmond, Oklahoma. So yeah, this this whole thing, right? It was just amazing how sad it was and it was amazing the effect it had on me as a kid now i remember the um timothy mcveigh the murrah building bombing and uh my dad had like a job around that area so i remember we went a couple days after and, and you could i remember collecting a couple bricks just as kind of like a memorial type thing right and it was hard to wrap my head around that um, it sucked. It was it was saddening, and, and and it was just hard to fathom that somebody would do that in any capacity. How could somebody do that? Um, but to be honest with you, the, this this plane crash it affected me more. It uh, yeah, it was it was a sad time, and then. Uh, do do yourselves a favor, everybody. Go back and look at the game. I want to say it was like January 29th. Um, we played Mizzou inside Gallagher Arena. This is a, a young Quinn Snyder led club. A couple future NBA guys, and. The, the crowd, I think it was 13,618 or something like that. I know it was over 13,600, uh, maybe 13,611. I can't remember the exact number, but yes, talk, it was a sellout on top of a sellout on top of another sellout. And, you know, they had the moment of silence and they announced everybody. And it's just like, you know, I remember being there at that game and... The emotions for that one. Maybe that's why I have such this, this affinity and, 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 and massive amount of love for Gallagher Iba and all things Gallagher Iba because yeah, I guess I do remember all that stuff. But it's important, you know, to kind of talk about this because this is 22 years ago. And so there's a lot of people on campus that were not alive. There's a lot of people that have really no idea about this, which is why I think this is important. Not only is it important to fill the, the, the arena for this one because it's Ole Miss and because it's the SEC and we don't like the SEC and we don't like to hear them talk all the daggone time, so this will be a good opportunity to just at least have a little bit of, of bragging rights, especially for those who are friends with Spencer Sanders, give the little ha-ha Ole Miss nudge, right? There's, there's a lot of that, and that, that's why it should be full anyways. Plus, this team is – very capable of making a nice little run here. Again, this is a good time to start one. This is a very good time to start going on this little run here. 
And what better of an opportunity to do it? I almost would, would wager to say, I feel bad for Ole Miss. Right? They're potentially walking into a hornet's nest because of what it is. But I think again, that's important that we have this conversation because more so than just the basketball game, more so than the Big 12 SEC challenge, more so than it being Ole Miss, more so than us being on a run, it's because this one means more. Now, if you're if you're very young and you weren't alive when this happened and you didn't really know that this happened, I hope I hope you hear me. Because for us old heads, this is like tracing back to the times. We're going to the final four was something that you talked about all the time. So it's going back in a day where you knew it meant more. And again, I felt bad for Mizzou being in that building that the next game after that, that plane crash. And that's the crazy thing about emotions, right? They can go both ways. It can be so emotional that it catches hold somewhat negatively. And you don't play as well. But then on the on the flip side of the coin, if you're playing well enough that the crowd gets involved, and when a crowd gets involved with a little bit more emotion behind it, it's a recipe for that feeling, right? That physical feeling that we've talked about, Galgar Iba being so spread this out guys get this get this out there let's try to put as many butts in the seats as possible are we going to get 13,600 like we did in 01 no we're not and realistically speaking if it's anything over 7 8,000 it can still get ridiculously crazy in there as we've already seen I know some of the old school dudes are, will be back for this game. I know some of the family members of some of the people lost in this tragedy will be here for this game. Hopefully Spencer Sanders is courtside for this game. Heck, bring Lane Kiffin on too. He can watch it. But yeah, so for other people my age, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll remember... That's the point. Let's just go back and remember what it meant to be an O State basketball fan back then. Because it wasn't just about basketball or baseball, football, track, wrestling, none of it. It was about the university. I do know times are different. It's not the same as it used to be. The the youthful generation doesn't you know wrap their entirety around being an o-state fan or, or a cowboy or a cowgirl i get that times are a little bit different but every now and again we we find ourselves wondering and questioning how much how much positivity is left in humanity sometimes we find ourselves wondering that 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 very question and then sometimes you have days like this and you have times like this where we can stand up and scream from the rooftops why we are different. Why is it different to be a fan of Oklahoma State University? What we put on the court tonight should, should reflect that. I hope you can feel it through the TV. I hope you can feel it through the road radio. And even more so, I hope you can feel it in your bones. Right? Feel it in your loins, inside Gallagher, Iba. It's Ole Miss. It's the SEC. Screw the SEC. I mean, heck, that's that's enough for me. But for the younger generation, 
I think if this is something you attend, you will feel you will feel more connected to the university than you did before you went into the arena. So again, young cats, share this stuff around. Old heads, share this stuff around. Get as many students and young people into this building as possible because this has the opportunity to be an emotional type of response. An emotional type of response inside Galgar Ibe Arena does something to people. And it makes people want to come back. It's infectious. Now, I, I personally obviously cannot wait. It should be a fun one. It should be a good one. And it should be a packed out one. We can't always talk about how much we hate the SEC because it's a bunch of this, bunch of jibbity jabbity lip service all the daggone time from mouth breathing fire buffoons like Paul Feinbaum just spewing vomit nothingness of crap about how cool cats and kittens they are. I hate it. So now we need to have a response and a good way to respond to screw your conference and everything that you, you think you stand for, because here it matters more. Hold my beer and watch what we can do. Fill this thing out and make them realize that the SEC don't hold a candle to us in basketball. They can, you know, football, okay, it is what it is. You've you've fire breathing, mouth dragging your way up to the top for long enough. That you've solidified yourself. It's fine. It's fair. That's accurate. Congratulations. Basketball's a different story. And this is, again, a moment that we have to capitalize. We have to step on their throat as quickly as possible and put this thing out of range, out of misery, super early. That would be great because then you could see some legacy dudes like Manzer get on the floor and jack up a couple shots. I'm excited. I'm excited because I feel it because I was I was there the next game against Mizzou in Galgrava. But if you want more people to be connected to keep this cowboy culture growing from our side as well, help me get as many butts in the stands as we can today. Because this, again, has the opportunity to allow people to emotionally be more connected than they ever thought possible. Definitely, if you get students that have never been to a game in Galgraba, to this one, and they've got some, you know, heart and soul in them, you'll feel it. And it does things. And if we want to talk about future attendance, we want to talk about future recruiting and future success, it's moments like these that we need to capitalize on. And it's the last SEC challenge, at least contractually thus far. Maybe they'll renew it, maybe maybe not. And it's all mess, right? It just it makes sense, right? If you connect all the dots. So, yeah. Help me with this one. Because this one, it doesn't matter who we were playing, it just means more. We just so happen to get lucky enough that it's Ole Miss. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of extra animosity there that leaks over to the other side of Galgraba. So until a little bit later on when we have Mr. Kai Staley from Guthrie, Oklahoma, joining the program, he'll actually be in Stillwater today. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, he'll be. He'll be live and live in color on this program. And I'm, I'm very excited because we've got some old school stuff coming back to Stillwater. You can tell by the recruiting, the coaching, everything that we're doing. 11 personnel, 12 personnel, tight ends, big wide receivers, sticking behind the running game that we have, plus another running back from Michigan State coming in and Elijah Collins. So now that we're connecting some of those old school dots back to having a traditional, more fullback uh, type of role, who better to bring on the program than Kai Staley? Old school, hardcore, smash mouth, oaky, 
bring it all back. All right, y'all. Until later, as always, I love you all. God bless. Go Pokes. And thank you once again for making this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. Later, y'all.